So today I'm going to complete my series on how to teach your horse to go bridleless. Last week I covered how to start using your seat and your legs to control your horse rather than your reins. So if you'd like to see that video, I'll put the link in the description. So today I'm actually going to take off the bridle and start using a neck rope and we're going to go from there. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to talk about today is how to use a neck rope. So if you plan on going bridleless, you may use a neck rope just to add an extra level of security. So a neck rope is just a string that goes around your horse's neck and you can use it to emphasize steering or speed control. Neck ropes are designed to be used for neck reining. So that's why we covered neck reining in the previous video. Neck reining, you don't need to have pressure on the horse's mouth, but rather the horse is steering off of the pressure of the rein on their neck. So when you're using a neck rope, you're just gonna be neck reining. So I lay the rope against the horse's neck to get them to turn the opposite way. Another thing about using a neck rope is it's really just there in case you need it. But the first aids you should be relying on are your seat and your legs. So I only use my neck rope once I've used my seat and my legs and I haven't gotten the response I want. And I just use the neck rope to kind of emphasize what I'm asking of the horse. So you can see here I'm asking Tucker to back up and I'm first gonna ask with my seat and my legs and if he doesn't respond then I'll add pressure to the neck rope. So ideally I want the neck rope to remain pretty loose unless I need it and I'm applying that pressure but as soon as I apply the pressure and the horse responds correctly I'm going to release the pressure of the neck rope just because I want to teach them to be responsive to my seat and my legs first and that way pretty soon I won't even need the neck rope basically. So that's my idea behind that. So when it comes to using a neck rope, you can even start using it before you take your horse's bridle off. So as you can see here, I'm riding Tucker with the neck rope and also a halter. And I'll do this in the beginning just to have an extra level of security, especially when I start riding out in a larger area. I use the neck rope primarily as I would and I'm using my seat and my legs for my aids, but I have the halter or the bridle there in case I need it. So in case the horse maybe gets too quick and fast and they're not listening, I can control them, slow them down, and also let them know that that is not what I want. I practiced a good while just using the neck rope even though my horse still had their bridle on just to make sure that he would be responsive to my aids and that he was listening well. And this just really gave me confidence before I took the bridle off because I saw that he was very controllable and responsive without having to use the bridle. So here's just a funny video of Tucker getting spoiled. Um, but the next thing I wanna talk about is it's a good idea to start riding your horse bridleless in a smaller area like a round pen. So I don't have any clips of this because the round pen was pretty muddy. But when I first started riding Tucker bridleless, I only rode him in the round pen like that. I rode him that way for a few months just so I could feel secure and confident that he would listen to me. Round pens are nice because they kind of guide the horse in the direction and the smaller area also gives you more control. And so that's why I recommend riding in the round pen. And even if you're riding in the round pen, you can switch up your days where you practice in the round pen completely bridleless with just a neck rope and then you go into a larger area with the security of a halter or something like that. So that's what I did and I found that worked really well. It helped keep my training sessions changing and rotating so my horse wasn't getting bored with the same thing. So let's talk about when you actually move out to a larger area and you're starting to ride bridleless. I found the best way to do this is to make it all a game. So my purpose for this is to keep my horse staying focused and engaged in listening rather than giving them the opportunity to realize, oh, I don't have a bridle on, maybe I could just take off. So I really just mix in a bunch of obstacles and making my horse turn left and turn right and changing their speed within the gate. And you're just kind of seeing where your horse is when it comes to riding in a larger area. Here's an obstacle I like. I have two poles and a distance between them. Within this distance, I practice on changing my horse's speed within their gate. So you can see here, we accidentally broke into a trot. But this is just a great fun game to play. And all of these obstacles and things Things you see me doing are geared to helping my horse stay focused. So when I first started riding bridleless, I was kind of scared to go into faster gates like the trot and the canter. In the beginning, you know, I wasn't that smart and so I would just go trot and canter off and Tucker would just get faster and faster and suddenly... <laughs> 
<laughs> he'd be out of control. So what I started doing is I would just make those upward transitions really short. So I'd go into the trot for a few strides and then I'd bring him back down to a walk. Or I'd go into the canter for a few strides and I'd bring him back down to a walk. Another thing I did is Tucker's pretty steady to jumps and I knew I could get him to canter a few strides afterward before I went back down to a trot. So I would take him over little jumps just to get a few canter strides and then have him come back down. And that way, you know, he can get used to being in that gate without a bridle, but it's also making him pay attention and focus on what I'm asking him to. One thing I realized when it came to starting to go bridleless a lot is if I kept my sessions short, they would usually end well. I would only ride for this maybe like 10 minutes at a time in the beginning and I'd ride bridleless maybe for my warm up and then I'd put the bridle on and do a lesson or something. But the reason I did this is number one, wanted to keep my horse's interest and obviously the longer you ride, the longer your horse's interest may drift. I didn't want to give Tucker an opportunity to figure out how to be bad when it came to bridleless because I could see where a horse could figure out that they can just take off when they don't have a bridle on and then they can just do that every time you get on them. So I noticed when I kept the sessions really short and I tried to make them engaging and fun for him that he would do a lot better. All right, let's talk about the important thing. What to do if your horse takes off. So I don't wanna say this is inevitable, but horses are horses. They have a mind of their own. So sooner or later, it may happen. It's important to know how to handle it, especially since you're bridleless and you don't have the security of reins. So I'm just gonna walk you through a few exercises that I found helpful. So the first one is if Tucker started to get fast and not listening and he wouldn't stop, I would just face the fence and go straight towards it. So you may think, wow, that can be stupid because what if you just run into the fence? I would only do this if he were trotting and not listening or maybe cantering and not listening. And this is something I also worked on with the bridle. So he did it really well when it came time to doing it without the bridle. Um, and the fence just gives them a barrier to have them to stop or at least slow down. Another thing you can do, although I do avoid this as much as possible, is you can bring the neck rope up higher up on the horse's neck and then pull it towards your hip. And that's going to get them to spin in a circle. So I will say one time I did have Tucker take off with me and he was just going crazy and trying to buck. And so in the moment, this is what I found to do and it actually did work to stop him. This isn't my favorite technique just because it looks uncomfortable for the horse. If you're in an instance where the horse is out of control and you need to stop, that is probably the best thing to do. So another thing I do is if your horse is just getting fast and not listening, one thing you can do is just keep them going. So one time Tucker took off cantering and he just wouldn't stop. So I just kept him going around the ring over and over and over and over again until I started to feel him get tired and he wanted to stop and then finally I asked him to stop and he stopped perfectly. So what this does is number one, it makes your horse think that it's your idea that they're cantering. Number two, it's gonna teach them that that behavior is bad. So if they want to take off and not listen and you keep working them, you're gonna teach them that the bad behavior means more work. All right, so another thing to note is if you are finding that you're having a hard time controlling your horse with just a neck rope when you go riderless, it's important that you review the basics. So once again, go check out that first video and I'll put the link in the description to that. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos.